two readings from our epistle text. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the things like these. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, pa peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there can be no law. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've all heard John 3.16 as the gospel in a nutshell. But also, in our second stanza of our hymn of the day, the one that we just read, we find also the gospel in a nutshell. This applied to us directly, and in that stanza, we're the ones speaking. That's one of the things that I love about hymns, and you know I love hymns very much. I believe that hymns are sermons that are set to music. So, we have multiple ways that hymns are written. They're written from first person, second person, and even third person. Well, here we have first person. Should some lust or sharp temptation fascinate my sinful mind, draw me to your cross and passion, and new courage I shall find. Or should Satan press me hard, let me then be on my guard, saying Christ for me was wounded, that the tempter flee confounded. How beautiful that hymn is. Satan certainly is after us. Of that, there can be absolutely no question. The, Satan, in particular, attacks the pastor more often, more frequent, and with much more fervor. And so, I pray to Christ, and I tell Satan that Christ has died for me, it was for my transgressions that he was wounded, and for my life he died. Satan, hear this proclamation. I am baptized into Christ. And Satan flees to hell, the place where he should remain. But we must always be on guard, for Satan is not one that is bolstering, not one that's in our face. Satan is not one to be recognized very easily. He is camouflaged. He comes to us in pretty faces. He comes to us in stealthy ways. He operates in the darkness. He operates in the night. He is like a roaring lion, not roaring yet, but crouching all around us. But the worst thing that Satan does is of the least little bit. It's that tap on the shoulder. It's that whisper in the ear that says, this sin, not so bad. We can justify that. Next thing you know, as C.S. Lewis said, the path to hell is a gradual one. It is one over time. Each step that we take that we do not repent, we slowly are entering into hell. C.S. Lewis was right. But thank God for St. Paul, because St. Paul knew the devil all too well. In fact, he was imprisoned ultimately killed, and even says as he writes that there was a thorn in the side of his flesh. While no one really knows what that thorn was, I think it's, we could say that it's safe to say that it was from Satan. So even St. Paul tells us that we must be attentive 
We must look out for Satan in every single possible way. And to, and to be able to point to one another and say, at least I'm not being conflicted in the way that, in the way that someone else is, then we certainly see that Satan works in all of us. Those who point fingers and those who point fingers simply in different directions. What fools we are to think that we can earn salvation by pointing out the log in other people's eye. Shame on us. Shame on us. Be on your guard. Understand that it is in your flesh that you watch out for sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgy, and things like these. Be on guard for things like these. Because these are the things that slowly creep into our lives and we say, well, if I whisper this thing against someone else, it's not really that bad. I am simply giving information. You see how simple it can be? But in that simple exchange of information, Satan smiles. In our impurity, Satan grins. In our fits of anger, he allows us to burn hot. In our rivalries, dissensions, and divisions, he laughs with glee. Keep your mind on these things. I fear sometimes, every time that I write a sermon, that, that, that I will hear it and you will hear it and think, that was a nice 15 minutes or less. But now that that's over, I can go on my way and not think about it anymore. I don't think we can do that with this text. This text hits us right to the heart. Paul says, watch out for these, and we say, wait, we've done these. Repent. As we said in... Bible study today. What is repentance? But that you stop and you turn around and you do the things of God. You stop doing the things of the flesh. And when we stop doing the things of the flesh, then we see that we have returned to God. And if you don't understand this, I can explain it this way. I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. Confession. Repentance. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And then in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we repent, as we turn, as we hear those words of beautiful forgiveness, our hearts are changed. You cannot come into the divine liturgy, the divine service, and not be affected. Your heart's changed. They're given over to the good things of God. You're, they are given, you are given over to God himself. When the angels hear your confession of sins, they rejoice and they point to Christ saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yes, even that sin, even those sins. Repent, return. Have your heart circumcised by the very blood and body of Jesus. When we do that, we have a fruit of the Spirit. For it's the Spirit who calls us to repentance and the Spirit who, who grants absolution. And our hearts are changed and then all of a sudden we have a spirit of love, of joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control those things that can be no law. And so here we are, lepers, in our
our sin we are lepers with sores and unfit for the temple of God. That's what, that's what a leper is. He is filled with boils and with flesh leaving its, his bones. Therefore, they are unclean and unable to go to the temple. That's why Jesus says, first, go show yourselves to the priest. The reason Jesus says, go show yourselves to the priest, is because the priest has to look over the leper and say, you are healed. Now you are clean. Now you can come into the temple and receive the forgiveness of sins in the slaughtering of animals. And yet there was one, one person who turned around and went back to Jesus. And here's the very interesting thing. Not only was he a leper, he was a Samaritan. So even if he was cleansed, he still could not enter into the temple because he was not a Jew. So what does he do? He can't go to the temple. He has to turn back to Jesus. And he has to hold on to Jesus. What is the temple good for if Jesus isn't there? What is the church good for if Jesus isn't there? And so we turn back to Jesus and we give thanks to him with loud voices. The very body right here on the altar is called the Eucharist, which literally means to give thanks. So every time we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we give thanks to God for cleansing us in both body and soul. So yes, let us put away all of those things. Let us put away the works of the flesh, those things that are evident to us all, and put on the, the spirit of love, because the spirit of love knows no bounds and affects each and every one of us. And so, as you hear those final words of Jesus, as you hear the Samaritan coming back and fleeing to the only person that we can flee for refuge to, let us know that we do have the forgiveness of sins, that we are Christians, and that we ought to turn ourselves to the fruits of the Spirit. When we do that, receive the Eucharist, when you hear the words that come out of my mouth, when you sing the hymns, when we go through the liturgy, it is this that Christ says unto you, for you have heard the word, and you ha your hearts have been changed, circumcised by the words. Christ says this to us all, go, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. And everything all those sins are as far as the east is from the west. All of them. Every single one. As we rise and go our way, let us remember that we have neighbors. We have those who we need to love. Let's go love them. Let's show the love of Christ, not only as members of Augustana Lutheran Church, but also as those who are willing to get down into the mud with others to help them, to let them hear the words of Jesus, so that they too might hear those words. Your faith has made you well. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.